Okay, so uh, the recording started. Um, we'll be able to send out the recording after the meeting for, for those of anyone having any problems or anyone who has to drop off early. And uh, my name's Miles, uh, the project manager for this tool, this utility, BMC Insight. And I'll hand you over now to Jonathan Chivers, our um, product manager. Good afternoon, everybody, or good morning for our friends in America. Uh, also, I'd like to introduce Manny, who's on the call. Manny is the lead developer who has um, help us, helped us get this far. So, um, next slide, please. Thank okay, you. So, what I we've put a slide. We, I'm going to walk you through each of the slides. Uh, no. Sorry, let me start again. We've arranged the slide deck to match up what was in the, the agenda that we set in the meeting. So, the first slide, what is the BMC Insight? It's a support utility, uh, the purpose of which is to gather the installation and configura configuration information that support need to provide context to the information you provide when raising a case. So, when, so when you raise a case, you need to provide the symptoms you're seeing, the use case to recreate it, and a range of information about what products installed, what version, what um, hot fixes, what patches you have, what operating system, uh, key configuration files, so that support can see the full context of the problems that are being reported. And that process of collecting all of that background information can take anywhere between a few minutes to a embarrassingly large number of days. Uh, only when that information has been collected are support able to say that they have a clear enough understanding of the symptoms and the context that they're living in that they can start the diagnostics process. Does that make sense so far? Any questions? No? Okay, that's good. I shall take silence as acceptance. Well, one thing I forgot to mention is thank you very much for everybody's time. Uh, we really appreciate that you've all volunteered to be part of this pilot. Uh, we're all excited about its ability to make a big difference to the, um, all of our customers' experience of using the support facility. So, thank you. Um, Can everybody hear me well? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, good. All right. Uh, if you'd like to move on to the next slide then, please. Okay, so big question. What products are supported? For the purpose of the pilot, we didn't want to try and boil the ocean. We wanted to have uh, a fairly tight scope, but one that we felt would demonstrate a wide range of possibilities for the tool. So what we've done is we've limited it to remedy from version 7604 upwards, and, that it, and then limited it to remedy that's been installed on Windows or Linux platforms. For the Linux platforms, we've used pretty standard libraries to communicate from your desktops to the servers. So it may well work in other flavors of Unix, but we're not quite, we're not 100% certain. So if you have non-production environments in some, in a Linux, in a Unix that isn't Linux, or isn't Red Hat, by all means, test it. Let us know what ones you're doing, and that will help us understand how much work we have ahead of us when we go to a GA environment. Uh, we're leveraging the maintenance tool that is part of the common installer process for that's already included in about 35 products. So once we have a successful pilot and we start the GA planning, we will be able to expand out the use of this tool to around about 35 products. Um, that includes TrueSight, formerly known as BPPM, and the majority of the Blade Logic Suite, CLM, BAO, um, 
But again, I'd like to reiterate, we only want you to point this tool at non-production environments. We have no reason to believe that it will have any unexpected or unpleasant side effects on a production environment, but this is not yet GA code. Uh, we have taken every effort to QA the code to a thorough and realistic level, but um, only when we've been through the full GA certification do we want you to let this loose on production. Does that make sense? Any questions so far? No, well, it's fine so far. Good. Thank you. Next slide, please. So, big question, what's it do? So, the tool is installed, will be installed on your desktop, and it will, during the installation process, during the configuration process, you'll define each of your non-production environments you wish to point it at, uh, and it will reach, when you say, go away and collect for me, so initiate a run, the tool will reach out to the maintenance tool that was laid down as part of either the ARS install or if they used the common installer for the mid-tier during that install. And it will drive that tool to go away and collect information about the operating system, information about what products were installed, what versions, um, and will retrieve key configuration files and a range of log files. Uh, I'll come back to the log files later on. Um, all of that information will then be retrieved back to the to the Insight utility, will be consolidated into one bundle, trimmed down to size, which will get rid of the majority of the log files, and then be available for emailing back to us so that we can then verify the quality of the data that we've received. If any of you have used the maintenance tool before, you will notice that this will be very familiar territory that because we're reusing a lot of the code from that product. Um, any questions on that before we move on? The next slide will go to a little bit more detail, detail about how it does that. No? Let's move, please. So, it'll be installed in your administrator's desktop. When I downloaded this and installed it, it took about five minutes. We're using the common installer framework, so it'll be very familiar to any, anyone that's installed an enter BMC Enterprise product. It will have exactly the same look and feel because it's exactly the same installer that everything else is using. Uh, when the tool is installed, you will be walked through creating a Inst a name for each of your Remedy instances. So if you wish to point it at, say, a QA and a dev environment, each one will have its own unique definition. You will need to put in the name of the server um, and some operating system credentials. Those will then be validated to make sure that, one, we have a network line of sight between your desktop and the target servers. Two, to validate that the operating system acknowledges and accepts the credentials you've presented. Three, to make sure that we can contact the maintenance tool and establish a communications path to it. So by the end of that configuration process, we will have validated that all the major components are in place, they're all available, and that they're all talking to each other. Uh, because of the maintenance tool that we are driving has the potential to bring back large log files. So when we tested this on our in-house systems, it was easy to get into the 150, 200 meg region for the file sizes. We know that for the purpose of the pilot, we want you to email the output to us. So we've built in a trim function that will take out the large log files we will have the files under 4 meg, as that seems to be a fairly common upper email attachment limit. Uh, one of our intentions in the GA version is to be able to leverage the new secure file transfer system that's being built in parallel to this project, so that 
once the data has been collected, you'll be given an option to say, do you want to email it, in which case it will be trimmed, or do you want the full configuration and log file sent, in which case it will be diverted through to use the secure file transfer system. Uh, once the information is back at BMC, for the purpose of the pilot, we will have some of our support analysts open up each of the packages using the maintenance tool and to walk through to make sure that they can retrieve the information that they would need to um, build that context about the support case so they can make sure that the next email that gets sent out, instead of being a request for, by the way, what operating system was this installed on, or can you confirm what patches you have, the next, the first email that will come out uh, when this is in place and adopted would be, here is my first diagnostic step. You know, please make these configuration changes, please enable this logging, and send me the output back. Does that make sense? Any questions? No? Move on. Okay, sometimes I like pictures, so here's a picture that describes what I've been talking about for the last five or ten minutes. The areas in grey are things that we intend to do for the GA version. The areas that are in nice colours are what's in the pilot. So the Insight tool is what will be installed in your desktop. Um, the box on the left-hand side is one or more servers that have um, AR, either AR in either single stack AR and mid-tier or AR in server groups and mid-tiers in pools. They will be contacted, have the information pulled out by the maintenance tool and it will be shipped back to your desktop where it will be collated and trimmed so that it can be emailed out to your, emailed, out, emailed back to us. Um, when we invoke the default email client, we will open up a new email and we will put the full path name to the file to be attached into the subject line. For the pilot, we haven't tried to be too clever and we will not attach the file. You will need to manually copy the file path and use that to attach the file before sending it to us. Um, one of the things that we will look for with the GA version is to simplify that process. Any questions on the picture before we move on? Okay, slide number seven, please. Okay, so what happens in the pilot? We envisage it running through three distinct phases, preparation, actually running the use case and wrapping up. For the preparation, we will be sending out this slide deck, all the underscored text in the fetching, what do we call it, teal? Uh, is actually an active link. So we would like you to follow the link and if you haven't done so already, sign up for the customer support community page. This will give you access to an area where you can contact us, um, bounce ideas around, start discussions. We would then like you to follow the link to the documentation page. On the left hand side you see about four or five documents. I'd like you to read all of those. None of them are particularly long or onerous. So grab a cup of tea, grab a cup of coffee, sit down, work through them, and you should be able to get through the whole lot before your tea is cold or your coffee is finished. When you've done that, you can follow the link for the download and installation page, which is actually one of those documents. The download when I tested it earlier in the week was about 180 meg download for 40 meg or so install. Uh, I work from home and over the company VPN it took about 15 minutes to download it, it took about 5 minutes to install it and we built it on top of a Windows 7 desktop. Uh, suspect it will work nicely on older versions but probably will not play nice but may well not play nicely on Windows 8 so stick to Windows 7 please. We Part of the documentation is a set of use cases which walks you through, uh, open it up, 
add in some servers, add the credentials, run. Uh, we would like you to execute the running and running collection and emailing once per environment that you have, assuming that it works first time and we don't need to assist you in overcoming any odd obstacles that we haven't thought of so far. During that time, we would like you to monitor the memory, CPU and network of the target servers that are being reached out to collect. We don't expect it to have any unexpected impact on the performance of the machine, but we would like to collect that data if possible so that we can just make sure that we're not, um, make sure that what we unleash upon your systems when we get this into GA in production has, does not have any unpleasant side effects. The email that the email that is generated automatically will go to customer underscore care at BMC and Miles and I will pick it up from there. And once you've completed the test cases, just walk through the checklist, make sure that, um, make sure that, sorry, somebody's pinging me. Oh, okay. Uh, make sure that you've completed the checklist and then send that to Miles and myself. At the end of the survey, we will, at the end of the pilot, which we expect to be the end of next Friday, uh, we will be sending out a survey asking for your experience of um, the documentation, installation, configuration, running it and emailing, uh, and general feedback. And along the way, please use the communities, the customer support communities page if you wish to discuss anything with us or the other people on the pilot. Seems like I've been talking for a long time without breath. Did that all make sense? Any questions? I shall yes. take silence. Sounds beautiful, thank you. Oh, okay. Everybody's just working out how to come off mute on link. That's good. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, when is the pilot? Well, it starts at the end of this call. Uh, we will email out a, we will be sending an email to you shortly after this call saying, welcome to the pilot, thank you for offering up your time. We would anticipate it will take three or four hours of your time, so pretty low effort, I think. Um, if you could use that time across the next seven working days, that would be very beneficial to us because we would like to wrap up your, your, your side of the pilot on by the end of next week. It would take us a little while longer to go through and validate all of the output and to analyze it and present back to our management. Any questions on the timing? No. no. The email that we send out will have this slide deck on it with all, the, all of the links. But once you've registered on the documentation page, then you have all the information already. So where do I find it then? Thank you. Uh, pretty self-explanatory. Follow the links once you get the, the slide deck and you should be good to go. If you get stuck or curious, use communities, email Miles or myself. We are both traveling to a internal meeting in Houston for next week. So we'll be next week we will be available during the US working day so but we're in and out of meetings so we'll respond to emails but probably slower than usual and uh, tea breaks and lunch times we'll be able to jump onto calls if necessary any questions on that before we move on no okay next slide please Okay, I figured that somebody would say, ask me questions about what do we intend to do when we go GA. So some of the things that we are anticipating to incorporate fairly early in the product life cycle is integration to the new secure file transfer system. This is a replacement for the current FTP mechanism support to use. Uh, so it will allow us to um, programmatically integrate into the sending large files home. 
we are looking at having a data scrubbing function. So we know a number of a large number of customers have either industry, state, or federal regulations that govern sending out things, sensitive data such as server, server names, IP addresses, and usernames. So we are investigating the practicality of having a mechanism that would automatically tokenize and anonymize that data before it leaves your organizations. Uh, the maintenance tool is already included in about 35 enterprise products. So whilst we don't promise to do all 35 on GA version 1, it is our intention to ramp up to the largest practical number as quickly as we can. And one of the other things that we're looking to do is once we start having multiple customers adopt this and send back multiple iterations of uh, the same sets of data. So if you were to say, here's our production run now, and we can go back and automatically, we're looking to see how practical is it to have a mechanism that would say, what's changed since the last one of those, that set of data we got from the same environment. So if we could, if we can make that work, if there's a practical way to do that, we would then be in a position to start looking at saying, if the certain configurations have changed, to, to flag those as ones that are known to be contentious or potentially dangerous. So that again, it's all about finding ways to get you a better experience through faster support case resolution. Again, no commitments on any of those, but that is our intention is to um, explore all of those for their adoption as soon as is practical. Any questions? If not, we are two minutes before the end of our scheduled time, so for once my uh, presentation skills have, and timing have been on the money, which is a pleasant surprise. Uh, so I'd just like to say thank you all very much for taking your time and uh, committing yourselves to the pilot. Look forward to hearing from all of you either when the results start coming in or you have questions or start discussions on the communities and look forward to your engagement and we're all very excited about where this can lead. Uh, hi, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, this is Mohan from Trans America. So is this BMC Insight, is this kind of a replacement for maintenance, the maintenance utility that we have currently? Probably no. I have joined a little late, so I know if well, you have no, already. It, no, we, we leverage the maintenance utility. So currently, you would need to go, if you, particularly if you had a production environment that had, say, four servers in a server farm and three mid-tiers, you would need that had been where the mid-tiers had been installed with the common framework, the common installer. You would need to go out to each of those boxes individually, right. run the maintenance tool, take right. the output, bundle it back together and send it to us. Um, this tool will simplify that process by once you've defined each of those servers to the administration, to the Insight utility, it will reach out, do that work for you, bundle it up, and simplify the mechanism to get it home to us. So, okay, so is it, I mean, including AR servers as well as the uh, web servers? Like in our case, all AR servers are on Solaris boxes, and the mid tiers are Windows boxes. So, yeah. so we, we definitely tested the communication channels on Windows and Linux. We okay. used okay. common libraries in Linux to, for the communication and um, transport mechanisms. So we are interested, if you can test it on Solaris, we're very much interested to see your experience. So we know it works on Linux when we tested it, when we built it and QA'd it. But we're interested to see how common the libraries are between Linux and other flavors of Unix. OK. OK? All right. Thank you. Did, did that answer your question? Yes. Thank you very much. OK. All right.
we're right on the nose for the time we asked we asked for. So, are there any other questions, or would you all like to go go away, read the documentation, and get excited? Sure. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. If there's no other questions, I will say thank you all for your time and look forward to the data coming in and um, emails or questions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.